I went to Columbia University to ask the students these questions based on the hearings of Dr. Christine Blasey Ford and Judge Brett Kavanaugh, which had taken place the day before. A Columbia Law School graduate and Associate Justice of the Supreme Court of the United States, Ruth Bader Ginsburg, is known for her strides contributing to the advancement of women in the United States. LTU spoke with Justice Ginsburg's alma mater about their thoughts regarding the sexual assault allegations surrounding Judge Brett Kavanaugh, who will end up being her lifetime co-worker if confirmed. Let's see what the students have to say about the issue. As a victim and a survivor of sexual assault myself, I am feeling particularly helpless in this moment, just knowing that the people who are in the highest positions of power in this country are deeply opposed to listening to women. And I, I, I fundamentally believe that everyone in that room yesterday believed Dr. Blasey. I don't hesitate for a second to think that they couldn't see that she was absolutely credible, she was composed. It was just a clear demonstration that they didn't care. It wasn't about belief, it wasn't about proving anything, it was about who do we want to have power in this country and at this time and place right now, women are still not the answer. I definitely am inclined to believe Dr. Ford. I'm more inclined to believe Dr. Ford. I'm inclined to believe Dr. Ford. I think that it's very important in cases like this to listen to what the victim has to say. Just as a woman, I'm inclined to believe the woman. I just don't think, it's very unlikely, I think, that a woman would accuse someone of this unless it had actually happened. Uh, there's nothing to gain. So it's twofold, I suppose. I'm inclined to believe that Dr. Ford did have something happen to her. Uh, she doesn't seem like someone who would lie about that for any reason whatsoever. There is no reason to lie about it. She was very convincing. Uh, she gave a great personal antidote. So I believe that something, something happened to her. Uh, I was particularly concerned that the only witnesses she pointed to said they didn't recall uh, what was happening or who Kavanaugh was. I understand that they were drinking, so everyone's uh, recollection may be fuzzy, especially that it was 36 years ago. Um, but that evidence that suggests that the only people who were in the room didn't know what happened. Or, I'm sorry, in the house rather, was a bit concerning. So I believe that something happened to her, but I'm still trying to make my way into believing that it was Kavanaugh. Yeah, a friend came into my room last night sobbing, and I was trying to comfort her. I, I was just telling her that all these these men that are discussing Disgusting. They have been in power all of this time. They've always been in power. The world hasn't gone to absolute shit. I mean, it has in some ways, but we're still here where, like, it's okay. Men like him have been in power for a long time, and as long as you have people who are willing to fight it, then I, I'm not worried about Armageddon. I feel like people do kind of act like these moments, like it's going to be apocalyptic, and I think we do need to resist it, but I also think we're kidding ourselves if, like, he's an exception, because that was another thing with me too is that these people would come out and like everyone was so shocked and be like oh I can't believe that all these actors were actually like dicks I'm like it's not just actors it's everything like there are men like him everywhere obviously there's the question of whether this would swing the Supreme Court to the right whether that would be the sort of straw that breaks the camel's back in terms of things like overturning Roe versus Wade and other important obviously not just reproductive rights but uh, other court decisions that pertain to social justice and things like that that. And that's obviously a very real concern. I certainly hope that, you know, that those things don't happen. To me, there's a deeper issue about power and about who gets to make these decisions that regardless of who the nine people are in the black robes, isn't going to be addressed by a hearing like this. Whether it's the Republican Party or the Democratic Party, however they may seem to be opposed in terms of some of these issues, the thing that they share in common is the idea that we shouldn't be able to make these decisions, right? That women themselves aren't the ones who should actually decide if they're getting an abortion or not, if they have to have a baby or not, but some politician, some judge, some, you know, official, some authority. And to me, that's exactly the opposite of the direction that we need to be going as a country in terms of the, the critical decisions that impact our lives. While certainly there is a place for bodies of resolution when questions are too big or too controversial to be able to figure it out on local levels, but I think we should break those down further. In terms of things like reproductive rights, it seems very obvious to me that that's something that should be made on an individual level in terms of the body of the person that's being affected by that decision. There's no legislator and no judge who should be able to decide that for anyone. This, this idea of like decentralizing power and decision 
making away from politicians and judges towards the people who are actually impacted, that's the direction I'd like to see this country going. And my fear is that that's what's going to get lost in these discussions over Kavanaugh. Because let's say in, you know, a liberal's best case scenario that Kavanaugh gets tanked and he resigns in disgrace and he's not. Okay, so then what Trump is going to do is he's going to appoint another conservative who didn't sexually assault someone in the past. And that person is going to go through the same process and probably be approved and make the same decisions. Or, you know, alternatively, you know, say Trump is impeached and there's a Democratic administration, then a Democrat appoints the person and the person's a little more liberal and maybe Roe versus Wade gets preserved for another 10, 20 years, whatever. But there's something that's the same in all these different scenarios, which is that we don't get to decide. Our power is being taken away from us. And that's the problem. That's the deeper problem that no Supreme Court justice can address. He would be the swing vote in terms of keeping Roe v. Wade in play and Roe v. Wade could get overturned pre-detrimental for Roe versus Wade. There's the whole Roe v. Wade situation. Whether or not you believe that abortion is okay, like that's not applicable in this, in this sense. Like, please like have your own beliefs. But when it's illegal, it doesn't prevent women from having abortions. The only way to make sure that women aren't dying from abortions is to make them safe and legal. I mean, if you're gonna not let them have abortions, then maybe you should let them have uh, childcare and oh, paid uh, maternity leave. Oh no, we can't have those things either. Well then, what are we supposed to do if we're not if we're not also gonna be having healthcare and childcare? Like, it, you're not giving us any options. Millions of women would be denied their basic human right of having healthcare, and men many, many women would die violent deaths. I truly believe that. In terms of other things, I've heard that he poses a threat to healthcare, which I'm not an American citizen, so it's difficult for me to have have a say on things like that because I wouldn't necessarily be affected. It sounds like it would be pretty detrimental for things that I personally care about. So I would think that the consequences would be negative. And especially when you're talking about the Supreme Court, he's clearly going to be there for decades. He's young, <laughs> relatively young, so um, he could be there for a pretty long time. And I, I'm all for the victim in this one. I am all for that. But it is a logical inconsistency when you say that listen to the woman because she's going through pain, right? Um, I mean, you know what? Even saying that sounds harsh to myself um, it's more like I'd honestly insist on justice being delivered with due process with the precedent being set in stone I don't support Kavanaugh or anything or any any of what he's done if he's done that but what if he's not or what if he has but the next person in line has not or the next person in line has not so a good example of this is something that happened in India this this woman goes on her social media and she posts about how she, she was harassed on the crossing and this guy gets shitted on he, he gets he gets thrown out of his job the media conducts trials on him. There's all sorts of degradation of character. Three years later, the courts prove that he was not guilty. She admits that she she admits on camera that she made that up. But you know what happens? That guy still lives a life of shame. His life is ruined even when he's alive. There is trauma where there needs to be no trauma. I am here today because I'm angry and I just want to shout. I just want to scream and yell and shout. I'm a survivor of sexual assault. Many, many women are. I never reported my rapist, and I never will. If he were to be nominated to the Supreme Court, I think I'd fucking say something. I don't, definitely don't think he's the right candidate for a Supreme Court nominee. I think his past record at Yale and high school has showed that his treatment of women isn't just and isn't correct. I think that if he was put on the board, I don't think his decisions would be the best because his moral character has been totally destroyed. He's not ethical, and he has denied the allegations too, so he hasn't even come forward and been honest. So if we can't even trust him with such basic human decency, how can we trust him in making the most important laws in the country? I think it's a very exemplifying story about how women are treated in the United States and in the world. What I think is that there is a connection between the 17 years old Kavanaugh assaulting women and the 50 years old judge against abortion and that this story exemplifies how being anti-abortion means being anti-women. You know, I think it's required viewing for men, probably, to watch Dr. Ford's testimony. It's also an empathy exercise for progressives to listen to Kavanaugh and not get infuriated. I don't know if it's fair to be inclined 
mind to believe any one person. I think that in our political climate, truth has really been, is this thing that is now like fungible. You know, it can be changed and shifted and appear to be one thing while, you know, in fact it is something else. I think that I'm more in inclined to believe Dr. Ford, but I don't know if that means that everything she was saying is, you know, truthful in, in like the literal sense of the word. So I think the question of the FBI investigation is, it's a red herring. I think it's a mood point. And the reason I think that is, one, you can just tell from the reactions. Like a public figure who's going to be responsible for decisions that impact millions of lives, who reacts with that kind of like hostility and defensiveness and evasiveness. It's not someone that I would trust to like babysit my kid, let alone like determine the future of the country, right? An FBI investigation isn't going to change that perspective one way or the other. What I think is the deeper issue is that this notion that's coming out in you know, the Mueller investigation, in the debates about James Comey, and in this case too, is positioning the FBI as an institution of like justice that's going to support finding out the truth and supporting women uh, who've experienced violence that just doesn't actually jive with the FBI's actual function or history. The FBI was started in the first decade of the 20th century specifically as a tool for cracking down on political radicals. Believing women is important. Telling survivors that you believe them is an act of revolution, it's an act of healing, but it's more than believing them. It's believing them, admitting that you believe them, and giving a fuck that something terrible happened to them. My sister always tells me that the likelihood of someone actually making up such an allegation like of sexual assault is the same percentage as someone lying about being robbed. So, well, I don't, I don't think she would do it for fame or for any sort of reason like that. I think she is an honest person, and I hope that the rest of the Congress sees that and the rest of the Senate votes in a direction that illustrates their belief in her. It was, it was really stark, the difference between Dr. Ford and then Judge Kavanaugh. You know, she was really composed, really, like, obviously a really painful process for her. You know, she's reliving things that happened, like, 36 plus years ago, and that's not easy. And Judge Kavanaugh was angry and belligerent and rude and really not treating senators with respect. When you're being nominated to do something of this magnitude, like, you, you like, have to treat them with respect. Like, it's, it, it should be disqualifying just that he's not giving this whole process the, res the like respect and restraint that it deserves. I don't want everyone to be liberal because then we're not going to get the solutions and the, the things we need. So it's good for there to be the conflict, but if there's conflict without any goal of resolution or any goal of a midway, then we're never gonna get anywhere. I was hoping that the Senate Judiciary Committee would be one of the least partisan committees. A few of the outbursts yesterday suggest that that is not true, but it, it has become a contentious issue. I think despite the partisan politics, the committee is the best place for the American people to find out what truly happened. An FBI investigation will just lead the committee to have more points to talk about uh, during committee sessions. So if we can just bypass the bureaucratic process and go straight to the committee hearings, I think that's what's best for the investigation. Well, I don't want to like look at every single person who supports Kavanaugh as a monster because I know there's people who I like I love that like would support Kavanaugh but it does come from this fierce ignorance I think and like selective ignorance because it's easier to believe in a world where like those men are still upstanding individuals it's like he can still be a effective judge whilst also have someone with a very dark past you know it is so important for us and that's why my roommate and I are out here today to push people to make some phone calls talk to their friends on campus who are residents of the states Alaska Tennessee West Virginia Arizona Maine to call their senators to let them know that um, the people who are on the fence like those are the voices that matter because in this moment it is so either black or white like it can't there's no gray area so that's why the few that are still making up their minds that's who's gonna be deciding the political climate for the next couple decades which is a terrifying thought but that's why we actually have to do something about it right now I think people my age group need to vote they need to get out there and vote it doesn't matter who you're voting for I just I I really need people to get out there and vote and express their beliefs because that's the only way that we can actually foster democracy in this country. I'm not entirely sold on all of Kavanaugh's rulings uh, or all of his personal opinions on some of the controversial issues. People more qualified than me to judge whether or not he's on the Supreme Court have stated that he's an excellent lawyer, excellent judge, he's a good character. 
Um, he has a good sense of character, so I'm not inclined to believe that he's not fit for the job. I think that whether or not Kavanaugh's on the Supreme Court, we will be fine. Some of the landmark rulings that people are concerned about won't be overturned. We were concerned about Gorsuch, but he's uh, actually helped in some of the liberal cases for the past year. I believe Dr. Ford because she she was clear about her story. She had no reason to lie while Brett Kavanaugh has a lot of reason to lie. It's too late for him to be seen as legitimate after this, I think. It's going to be tarnished forever, every decision he'll ever make. And also consequences, the Democrats are not going to stop until he's invest. He will be investigated at some point and it's just going to sow so much doubt in the legal system. I can't think of a single benefit. I just hope that it doesn't become a norm to drag out Supreme Court hearings. It can't become a norm. It needs to be one of the bipartisan aspects of our government. People talk about how the Supreme Court needs to be apolitical, which I also believe, but I think it's, that's, it's really difficult, especially in this situation, to be apolitical because it seems like there are clear bipartisan sides. There's just an assault on the judicial branch in every facet of the Republican Party. I think you, you wouldn't be overstating it to call it organized crime. I think that people need to start thinking about this movement as an organized crime movement because increasingly that's what it looks like. I do believe that he should withdraw his nomination and that any self-respecting, human-respecting person with political power should oppose his nomination. Check out each student's full interview in the description. LTU wants to make sure no one's views were misconstrued in the editing process. Also, all the students made very interesting points that couldn't be included in this video for the sake of time. The full interviews will provide more context if needed. Before you do that, give this video a like and subscribe to LTU so you never miss out on a conversation. If you don't want to watch the full interviews, check out the other videos that LTU has to offer. Thanks for watching. We'll talk again soon.